Are you looking for a travel trailer with a bunkhouse on board? Well, stick around, folks. We found some awesome travel trailers with bunkhouses so you can stow those kiddos away at night. Hey everybody, Mike from RV Blogger here in front of the camera and Susan's behind the camera. And if you've seen us before on YouTube, welcome back to our channel. If this is your first time seeing us, welcome aboard. Susan and I make tons of videos all about RVing and we invite you to subscribe to the RV Blogger YouTube channel. And don't forget to hit the notification bell when you do, so you'll be notified every single week when we put out a brand new video. We also invite you to check out our website at rvblogger.com where we have hundreds of helpful articles all about RVing there as well. But without any further ado, let's get started with our reviews of awesome travel trailers with bunkhouses. This travel trailer is the Forest River Wildwood model number 31 KQBTS. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 8,573 pounds, a cargo carry capacity of 1,292 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 9,865 pounds. The hitch weight is 905 pounds and it measures in at 36 feet 7 inches long and it can sleep up to 11 people. When you first walk into this travel trailer on the right hand side, you'll find the owner's bedroom. Then it wraps on around into the living and entertainment area, then into the kitchen area. And behind me here is where the bunkhouse is located. When you first walk into this travel trailer, you just can't help but notice the oversized couch and the big U-shaped dinette that's in here. They're both located in a slide out. So it really adds a lot of room and floor space in this travel trailer. But the overall feel of it is that it looks very comfortable, like you could lounge and relax and really enjoy your time inside this travel trailer. Now on my right hand side here is where the entertainment center is located. And normally your TV would go right on this wall here. It could, it's big enough to accommodate a really large size TV. All your wires go down through this grommet and plug into the receptacle and cable outlets that are all pre-wired for you here. Just below that, there's a really nice Furion sound bar. And then of course, below that, you've got your fireplace, which is super enjoyable in any travel trailer. We have a fireplace in our class A RV. We did not have one in our class C, but I'll tell you, we enjoy the heck out of it. Even on warm summer nights, we, we might come inside, relax, watch a little TV, and we always have the fireplace going when we do that. You don't have to have your fireplace heat. It can just be on and you can just enjoy the ambiance. Or you can use the heat on chilly days and warm up your coach that way too. Now, around the entertainment center, there are a couple of cabinet doors and there's some shallow storage in here. And you can put DVDs and things like that. Uh, away here and you've also got some open storage on this shelf as well. So here I am on the couch just past the entertainment area and it's very very comfortable and it's extremely multifunctional as well. This area uh, between the couch and the dinette can actually change shape to accommodate more people or less people or sleeping arrangements or all kinds of stuff and I'll show you how that works as we go through the video. But first of all, this couch itself is very, very comfy. It's got a unique storage system underneath of it as well. I haven't seen this before, but this door opens up and drops down. And then they have three of these totes under here that stow away, which I just think is a fantastic idea. Susan and I use totes for just about all of our storage in our RV. We use clear ones so we can see what's inside the totes, but nonetheless, it keeps things from sliding around while we're traveling. And this is the first time we've seen an RV come included with all these totes. And I'll show you some other places where they incorporate this as well as we wander on the way through the tour. But it's a very cool setup. Now, the other thing that this couch does is it, it will also jackknife out and create a sleeping space for somebody. So uh, I would say, you know, a kid could pr pretty easily sleep on here. It's about 62 inches by about 42 inches. So it's a pretty decent size for either a smaller size adult or a kid to be able to sleep here very, very comfortably. Now, when we move over to the dinette area, this is where it gets interesting. As you can see, it's currently set up 
as a U-shaped dinette. And I would say you could get maybe three people, possibly four people in here comfortably to enjoy a meal. But one thing you can do is remove this seat back. It just pops right out. It's very, very easy. And then the dinette itself also converts into a bed. And so now you've got all this sleeping space where you could probably get two adults sleeping in the dinette area, a kid or two sleeping here, and we haven't even seen all the bunks that are in the bunkhouse yet in the back of the RV. But it creates a really, really neat system. Now there's one other thing that you can do to give yourself extra seating space, maybe in the evening if you're sitting on your couch, and that is just slide this cushion over a little bit, and then we can take this, and pop it in place. And now all of a sudden, well, with the couch in place, you'd have extra couch room. So somebody could recline here on the end, you could still have three people sitting here on the couch. Everyone could be watching TV. It just, it's just really versatile. I think they call it their VersaTech. Versa Lounge. Versa Lounge seating system. Sorry about that. Uh, but it's neat. We've never seen this before. And it does offer you a multitude of seating and sleeping options. So the dinette also offers some storage under each of the dinette benches. And these doors open right up. And then they also have these storage containers under here as well. So. Again, it's a really neat way to make use of the space. It's a lot easier to store everything in a container like this. So again, it doesn't fly around when you're driving down the road. And it's easier than trying to reach under there and pull things out that you might have stored. So very clever idea and a neat way of doing it. Now, as I mentioned, the dinette will also convert into a bed. So you've got all of this sleeping space as well. And then finally, I just wanna point out the huge windows that are behind and on each side of the dinette and sofa area. You can open the side windows, get a cross breeze, but it also lets a lot of light in here. So it creates a really nice light atmosphere. So just across from the sofa and dinette is where the kitchen is located. Now this has a very nice size L-shaped kitchen in here. And all an L-shaped kitchen means is that, you know, you have every, all your major appliances kind of in the shape of an L. To start with, we have this large double bowl sink, which is a really, really good size. And then it's got a little strainer or a little, what would you call this, honey? Like a dish drain rack. A dish drain rack that goes on top of it. Yep, I wouldn't know much about that at all. And then we have this nice faucet overhead and this actually disconnects to become your sprayer as well. Now, one of the advantages of an L-shaped kitchen is that you get all this extra countertop space and as you can see we're at the maryland rv show we're in one of leo rv's uh rigs out here doing our shooting and um i'm just going to give them a quick plug if, if, if you guys are in the maryland area you got to stop by leo's they have the friendliest staff we've had work done at their shop before they took great care of us and they just do a great job with everything that they do but anyway moving along you'll notice with this extra countertop area there's actually double receptacles here. So if you've got a toaster, a coffee pot, a blender, an air fryer, whatever you have, you can line them up, plug them all in and be very, very convenient. Now, just next to the countertop area is where there is a three burner stove. Below that, we have a real oven. So that's a very nice feature. The knobs even light up, so that's kind of cool. Next to that, you might be thinking, well, there's no drawers in here. Well, there are, they're just behind this cabinet door. You got four drawers that fully extend so you can put away all of your kitchen utensils. And then finally, there's even more storage underneath of the kitchen sink. Now up above the countertop level, we have these really nice cabinets with these glass inlays or insets and then a good size cabinet with a shelf in the middle, which I really like that way you get you know, the, to use the most of the storage space without just stacking things on top of each other. And then you've got, you know, a regular microwave oven, decent size for this travel trailer. And then you have a very good size refrigerator in here. This is a 12 volt refrigerator. 
again, we're seeing these more and more and more. We don't see the old propane style uh, evaporator type fridges. We're seeing 12 volt fridges with a compressor that run on either a battery or shore power. Uh, these are fantastic because you get more room inside the fridge and the freezer and they're much more efficient and they get cold way faster than the old propane style absorption fridges do. So they're a tremendous benefit to us all in the RV world today. Now, just around the corner from the kitchen and refrigerator, there is this large pantry cabinet. So up top and down below, you have plenty of more storage here. There's also a receptacle located down next to the one cabinet door. And that way, if you're using your dinette as a workstation, you can easily plug in right next to where you are and charge up your computers, phones, whatever you have. Now, here we are in the very back of this travel trailer and it has an awesome, huge bunkhouse back here. Now, one of the reasons it feels so big and spacious is because it has slide outs that oppose each other. They're on each side of the room and they slide on out to create this huge floor space in here. So you could easily sleep five people in here and I'll show you how that works. First of all, on my right here, we have a bunk up top and a bunk down below. Now, as you guys know, we have four key items that we look for with bunk beds that we consider to be things that you really want to make sure you have included when you buy an RV with bunks in it. First of all, you want to make sure each bunk has its own light. Secondly, its own window. Third of all, we look for USB ports. And fourth, we look for electric receptacles. And this has all of those elements. The top bunk has a light and a window. There are also USB ports just off to the side. The bottom bunk doesn't have a window or a light, but it benefits from the light up top, and it also has the USB and receptacle right next to it. So it's very, very well set up. Now this bottom bunk can also fold up, and that allows you to see the additional storage space that you have down below. Now the other side of the bunkhouse is also very, very functional, and it has all the things that we look for in it as well. It's got a window, a light, it's got its own set of USB ports and electrical outlet on this side of the room as well. But it also serves a couple purposes. Number one, you can get one person to sleep up top here, but this also folds up and out of the way. And so this can become a couch. And then in addition to that, this couch can unfold and two people can sleep on this bed, which gives you a total of five people that can sleep back here in the bunk room. Now on the very back wall of the bunk room, you'll notice this big built-in cabinet system. First of all, this big space in the middle is where a TV could be mounted. And of course, if you've got five kids sleeping back here, you're gonna have to have a TV so they can watch YouTube, of course. Uh, down below the TV, we have some open storage here. And then of course your fuse panel is very accessible back here. But above where the TV would go, they have all these bins that are in place, which is a neat idea, I think, because you can store everything inside these bins. It won't go sliding around and it's very, very convenient. We're in an RV show, so we get some interruptions here and there. <laughs> now on each side, it has mirrored doors. And then inside here, there's a bar up top so you can hang garments and still store things down below. So here we are in the owner's bedroom. And the first thing you'll notice is this big sign up top that says custom king size bed. So the bed is 66 inches by 78 inches. Not a full residential king, but an RV style king. Still gives you a lot of space to sleep. You'll notice above you've got these nice cabinet doors with glass inlays. Plenty of storage up there for you to use as well. And then on each side of the bed, there's a cubby hole. And inside that cubby hole, there's a receptacle in there. You can reach it from the cubby hole or you can just open the door and have access to it as well and then on the nightstand on each side of the bed there's a usb port located just above another really great feature in this bedroom is that the king bed does lift up it's got shock absorber type struts lifts up stays in place and you can access all of the storage under your bed you can also access that storage from outside the rv on either side and then finally there's a little laundry cabinet here where you can open it up, throw your dirty laundry in there, and then you won't smell it in your bedroom because it's kind of in the under belly storage compartment area. One final thing to note is that your TV location 
is on this wall right here. You could mount a rather large TV here because there's plenty of space and you've got a receptacle and cable outlet all pre-wired for you in the ceiling. So here I am in the bathroom, which is located between the kitchen and the bunkhouse. So it's in a great spot. And I'm standing in the shower like I usually am. And let's see how much space we have in here from the shower floor up into the skylight. We have, gosh, six feet, eight inches of height. The regular ceiling height throughout this RV, just for you taller folks, is also six feet, eight inches. So a good amount of ceiling height inside of here. And uh, it makes it feel very, very comfortable. Now the shower itself, has a shower curtain, but the shower curtain's on a track, and so that's fantastic. It won't blow in on you, creates a nice seal, you know, it works nice and smooth and easy, so I really like that a lot. And the shower surround itself has a little spot here for your soap, maybe a shampoo bottle, and you could comfortably take a shower in here. It's not really wide, it's more deep this way, so you might have to stand kind of sideways while you take a shower, but that's okay. You can disconnect the wand, use it however you need, all in all, I think it's a pretty comfy shower. Now, just outside the shower, you'll notice the medicine cabinet above. Got a few built-in shelves there. I really like the backsplash they did in here. It creates a nice little accent. And then you've got your vanity sink, plenty of countertop space, another receptacle over top of the countertop, and then you have all open storage down below. As you know, no review of an RV can be complete without the old elbow test. Now this bathroom does not pass the elbow test, but with the door closed, I can tell you that it feels comfortable enough in here that you really won't feel very cramped at all. So one final feature in this RV, which we totally love, is the outdoor kitchen. And it's a very roomy kitchen area. It comes with a really nice sized refrigerator for all your cool drinks. It's got a sink out here, which is a really nice benefit because you can wash your dishes and grilling utensils out here without have to, having to drag them inside. And then it's got some storage over here, complete with storage boxes. Now this is the kind that we use. We always buy the clear storage boxes and Susan has these everywhere in our RV. Keep stuff from flying around while we're driving and we can see what's inside. And then finally, it's got some open storage up top here where you can store even more of your outdoor cooking. Now the grill itself is located right around the back of the RV. It's actually a bumper mount grill so you can just swing it on out, hook up your propane quick connect and you are cooking. This travel trailer is the Keystone Passport model number 3352BH. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 7,827 pounds, a cargo carry capacity of 1,673 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 9,500 pounds. The hitch weight is 950 pounds. It measures in at 38 feet, three inches, and it can sleep up to 10 people. When you first walk into this travel trailer, you walk right into the living and kitchen area. On the right hand side is where the main bathroom and owner's bedroom are located. And then towards the back of the trailer, that's where the second half bath is located and the bunkhouse is right behind me. So when you first walk into this travel trailer, the first thing you feel like is, hey, this is a nice big space here. And part of the reason for that is because the sofa and the dinette are in a nice deep slide out. It's almost about three feet deep. And so with that pushed out, you have a lot of nice floor space in here. Right at the uh, entry door here on my right hand side, there's a very big pantry cabinet located in here. These shelves are not adjustable. So this is really just meant for storage or a pantry. It's not really a coat closet per se. Then right next to that, we have our entertainment area with storage up above. And then in addition to that, you've got your TV with some open storage below and then even more storage below that. Now, just to my left hand side here, you actually have access to some of the kitchen cabinet area. So there are a couple of fully extendable drawers located here, as well as access to the cabinet underneath the kitchen sink. So straight ahead as you walk in and in perfect position to view the TV, you have this nice comfy couch for two right here and this actually is a sofa bed that pulls out into the room so two people could sleep on the sofa bed right next to the sofa bed we have the dinette area and this dinette is a u-shaped dinette i would say you could very easily seat four people at the table one on each end and maybe 
you know, two smaller folks on the inside here, maybe a couple of kids. Now this table will drop down and create another sleeping area. And it's really pretty long. I mean, I think we have about 74 inches and it's about, I don't know, 38 inches wide. So I would say, you know, an, an adult would be able to sleep here and definitely a couple of kids very, very easily. Now, right across from the dinette is where the kitchen area is located. And this is what we consider an L-shaped kitchen. Everything's right here in the shape of an L. We looked at the cabinets from the other side by the entry door, but you can also access the same cabinet space from inside the kitchen area. And then there are some drawers over here for utensils. Now these drawers are really pretty small. And if you wanna find the most efficient way to use small drawer space, I would say watch a video about fiberglass campers. A lot of those campers have really small storage area. We actually did a video, we've done several videos about fiberglass campers. Um, and we were at a rally with a bunch of casitas and they have small drawers and they have some very creative ways to, to make extra drawer space and store all their kitchen utensils. So if you have small drawers in your RV, check out one of our videos about the fiberglass trailers. Now, in addition to this, you also have a three burner range here. Below that, we have a real oven. And then below that, we have a nice deep drawer for pots and pans. Now, above your range is where your microwave oven is located. You know, it's a decent size for a travel trailer. And then next to that, we have a really big storage cabinet. Now, there's no shelf in here. And when you have these big, giant storage cabinets, you know, you either have to use a series of bins or... Um, you know, maybe set up your own shelf system in here so that you can stack things and get to things more easily. But it's a good amount of space for you to be able to use. And then right next to your cooktop and oven, you have your refrigerator. This is a 12 volt fridge. Looks like the old propane absorption styles are, are gone for good. I guess they still make them, but um, it seems like everyone's upgrading to the 12 volt fridges. And for good reason, they're more efficient. They can run on battery or shore power. They get cold much faster. You don't have all the issues with having to be perfectly level for it to work properly. So it's a really nice upgrade in addition to any RV. Now there's a little bit more storage here in the kitchen. I forgot to show you when I was sitting at the dinette, but in this particular camper, it's got these big fully extendable drawers that come out on both sides. So you can utilize all the storage possible underneath of your dinette booths. Now, right next to the kitchen is where this cabinet is located. And this can either be used as a pantry cabinet for your kitchen area, although you have a pretty good pantry cabinet over by the door, or you can use this for clothes storage for the kids in the bunkhouse, which we'll take a look at in just a minute. But this cabinet comes with fully adjustable shelves, and it also has a rod up top, so you can use it however you would like to set it up. And then you've got a bank of drawers down below that are fully extendable, for additional storage space as well. So here I am all the way in the back of this trailer now, and I'm in the bunkhouse. And the bunkhouse is set up very, very nicely. You could sleep, I would say, four people in here very, very comfortably. First of all, on my right-hand side here, there's a nice big bunk up top. Let's give it a quick measure and see how much space we're talking about. But we've got 74 inches by about 38 inches, so a very good size bunk. The weight limit on it is 300 pounds, and it has all the elements that we look for in bunk beds. It's got a window, a light, receptacles, and USB ports, so it hits all four of those features that really make your bunk beds comfortable and easy to sleep and live in. Down below that, we have a ladder here with some storage behind it, both above and below. Then, of course, we have the TV location with some open storage and cabinet space below that. And then finally, even more cabinet space. Ouch. <laughs> it's hard to shoot video and walk around in these things at the same time. <laughs> so my honey just crashed, but it's going to be OK. Anyway, there's lots of storage in here for, for your kids' clothes and belongings. Now, on the other side of the bunkhouse, there is a bunk up top. This has a 150 pound weight limit on it, so many adults won't be able to fit up here. But again, it's 70, well, let's see how big it is. It might be a little bigger than the other one. Nope, 74 by about 29 inches. 
And so one kid would be able to sleep up here very, very easily. Now on this side, we've noticed that in, this is in a slide out and very often in the slide out, you will not find a receptacle or USB ports, but it does have a window and a light. So it's kind of halfway there as far as what we look for in terms of being able to have good liv livability in your bunk. Now this bunk also swings up and out of the way and that reveals this sort of couch setup. So your, your kids can sit on the couch here if they like be able to watch the TV directly across from them. And then these cushions fold out and create two more sleeping spots in here. So you can actually get a total of four people uh, to sleep in this bunkhouse. Now, just outside the bunk room and before we get back into the kitchen is where another half bath is located. A lot of folks love to have the extra half bath because the kids can have this. It's right outside the bunk room. Um, and it also has its own entryway. So if the kids are outside playing they, or anybody needs to come in and use the bathroom, they don't have to traipse through the entire trailer to get to a bathroom. So it's very convenient in that regard. Now this bathroom of course comes with a medicine cabinet up above, you know, a decent sized vanity sink with a little bit of countertop space, a receptacle right here, and then a little bit of storage down below the sink. Behind me here, there's even more storage. These drawers are pretty good size, fully extendable. And then down below that, there's a nice deep cabinet here for even more storage. And then of course, if you're sitting on the commode in here, you know, decent size, certainly passes the elbow test. So this is a fantastic addition to any trailer. So here we are in the owner's bedroom, all the way in the front of this camper. Now, the way this is set up is, from the kitchen and living area, you have to walk through the bathroom to get into the bedroom here. And so some folks really like that setup because it gives you a big bathroom because it's the entire width of the trailer. Other folks don't like it because you have to walk through the bathroom to get into the bedroom. But either way, that's how this one is set up. Now the bedroom set up in here is pretty nice. The bed itself, it's pretty good size. It's 80 inches wide or 80 inches long by, yeah, 60 inches wide. So it is a residential queen size bed. Now you'll notice around the bed, of course, you've got all your cabinetry built in with storage overhead. And then on each side, there's a wardrobe cabinet with a shelf above for additional storage. And there's a bar to hang your garments. And these cabinets are very deep. So you can even store things towards the back or, or the front of the camper, but the back of the cabinet. Now, on each side of the bed, you'll also notice it has a huge nightstand. And these are some of the biggest nightstands we've ever seen next to a bed. So um, if you have a CPAP machine or you want to charge your computer, phone, whatever, next to you at night, you've got plenty of space for all of that. There's also a receptacle and USB ports loaded, located on each side of the bed as well. And another nice feature is you can get out of this bed from either side so you don't disturb your partner in the middle of the night if you need to get up. Now, right behind me here is where you would mount your TV in this bedroom. It's already pre-wired with a receptacle and cable outlet. So mount your TV, put it on the swivel arm, and boom, you can lay in bed and relax and watch TV in the evening. And finally, there's even more storage space located right under the bed. Now, here I am in the bathroom just outside of the owner's bedroom and outside of the kitchen area. We're right in between them. As I mentioned earlier, this bathroom spans the whole width of the trailer. And I'm standing in the shower and the height in here up into the skylight area is about six feet, seven inches tall. The height in the overall trailer is in the center of the trailer. Um, gosh, just about seven feet. It's six feet, 11 inches. So lots of ceiling height in this particular camper. And that's because the roof is made with an arch shape to it. So the center of the roof is a little higher and then it arches out to the sides where the ceiling height drops by about three or four inches throughout the trailer. But this is a good size shower. It's nice and wide, which is the advantage of having a bathroom as wide as your whole camper. So you can take a shower in here and be very, very comfortable. It's got a retractable shower door, which is a great feature to have. So you don't have to deal with a shower curtain. Of course, your sprayer is removable. And so uh, all in all, you're in really good shape. You've also got three shelves back here for your soap and shampoo. Now, Susan's standing in the shower and I'm on the other side of the bathroom and you'll notice you have a ton of countertop space here. That's really fantastic. 
You also have a nice size medicine cabinet above. You even have a window in your bathroom, which is very unusual, but it's nice to have a little bit of natural light. Down below, you've got storage underneath of the sink. You have a little drawer here, and then you've got some open storage under this part of the countertop space to round out the bathroom. So as far as the commode elbow test goes, I'd say you got plenty of room inside this bathroom. All the way in the front of this trailer and underneath the owner's bed is where your exterior storage is located. And as you can see, it's a really big space accessible from both sides of the camper. Now, this camper also has a small uh, outdoor kitchen area. First of all, it's got this mini compact refrigerator complete with an area to make ice cubes, which as you guys know, we enjoy scotch and sodas, so we need ice cubes when we're sitting outside enjoying a drink. Otherwise, you can store all your cold drinks in there and be good to go. You've got some open storage here above. And finally, there's a griddle here that slides right on out, connects to your quick connect propane, and you can cook away. This travel trailer is the Keystone Passport model number GT3401QD. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 7,929 pounds, a cargo carry capacity of 1,741 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 9,670 pounds. The hitch weight is 980 pounds. It measures in at 39 feet, 3 inches long. And bring the whole family, folks, because this baby sleeps up to 14 people. When you first walk into this RV, you'll notice on the right-hand side is where a private owner's bedroom is located. As we swing on around, we check out the dinette and kitchen area. That leads back to a nice family room area. Bathroom or mid-bath on my right. And then back here is one of the best bunk houses you'll ever see. Stick around to the end of the tour so you can check this thing out. So here I am in the front of this travel trailer and right inside the front door. And like I mentioned, the master bedroom is off to the right-hand side here. Good size bed in here. Let's see what we got. We've got about 60 inches across and 80 inches long. So it's a residential size queen bed located in the front bedroom. Each side has a nice wardrobe closet with a shelf for storage up above. There's also some additional storage overhead. Down below here, each side has its own sort of nightstand and table. Perfect if you have a CPAP or anything like that. You can put your phones, tablets, charge things on the side because there's a receptacle and two USB ports located on each side of the bed. Now the owner's bed also lifts up and there's some additional storage underneath of there. And your TV location is right here, which is in a great spot. Overhead, you've got your receptacle and cable hookups. You can mount your bracket to the wall here, put it on a swing arm and be able to watch TV from bed very, very comfortably. There's also a set of sliding doors to help maximize floor space in here so you can create a little privacy in your bedroom. Now, just outside the bedroom, we have this double cabinet set up. Now, the top half actually has a bar up top. You can use it as a wardrobe cabinet, as an extension of your owner's bedroom, or you can use the shelving in here and sort of use this as a pantry for your kitchen. The cabinet down below has built-in shelving, and so you could use it either way for clothes for your bedroom or also as pantry storage for your kitchen. Now, on this side of the kitchen island area, we have some storage underneath of the kitchen sink, which is actually pass-through storage because there are doors on the other side. So you can open this up from either side, which gives you great access. Then you have these nice full extension drawers, so you can have lots and lots of kitchen storage as well. So around the other side of the kitchen island, you'll notice that this is what we would call an L-shaped kitchen in here. It's in the shape of an L. Big advantage of an L-shaped countertop is that you get lots of countertop space, especially between the sink and the stove top. You can see we have our notebooks there. Uh, but you have plenty of space, and if you need more, it even has a countertop extension so you can get a little more countertop space. Now this has a really, really nice, big single bowl sink in here. I love the size of this because you could put pots and pans in there very easily, wash things up. It also has a built-in uh, sprayer. Now, a friend of ours who is a plumber uh, was watching the YouTube videos and he informed me that these are called integral sprayers. So for my plumber friend, hey man, thumbs up to both our dads. And also, here's the integral sprayer that you taught me about. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't know that I'll always call it that, but 
forgive me if I don't. Anyway, as you roll around through here, starting at the top, you'll notice that there's a TV location here, which is in a good spot because you'll see a little later in the video, you can see it very well from the dinette and the sofa. Off to the right of that, you have a microwave oven. You have your range hood, three burner cooktop, and a real oven down below, which all of you know, I love to cook my pizza. So there you go. Down below that, you have this really nice big drawer for pots and pan storage. And then of course you have additional drawer storage. And like we already mentioned, the storage under the kitchen sink goes through to the other side. Now, right next to the range and microwave and oven is where the refrigerator is located. Very good size refrigerator for in here. It's a 12 volt fridge, so it runs off your battery. And then up top, it's even got a separate freezer. So here I am at the dinette right across from the kitchen and we've lowered the table. We haven't thrown the pillows on here to make it into a full bed yet. But one really strange, do you notice anything strange going on here? Well, I do and it's that this sofa back is like leaning into the dinette. So if you were gonna even sit here and eat a meal or use it as a bed, this is in the way. Well, they've kind of got this neat little setup in here where to make it multifunctional, this piece goes either direction so if you want to use it as a dinette or for a bed in the evening you just slide it over this way and if you want to maximize your couch space then you would just slide it over that way so here i am over on the sofa and everything is nice and comfy over here this uh part of the sofa that i'm sitting on actually has a fold out bed underneath so you two more people could sleep here so you've got two people up front two people in the dinette two people sleeping here and wait till we get to the back and you check out this bunkhouse. Just beyond the sofa, you have this additional ca uh, cabinet space in here. This thing is full of cabinet space. So you could use this as additional pantry, maybe a linen closet for the bathroom, which is right across from where I'm standing, or even storage for kids sleeping in the bedroom. It just occurred to me, we may look a little crooked in some of these shots. We're in a big field full of RVs and they're not all level. So the gimbal keeps the camera level, but the RV is not level. So it may look a little crooked. Anyway, if you have never seen quad double bunks, check this out. Come on in. This baby has four double bunks built in. Uh, and so you could get eight kids back here very, very easily. The sleeping capacity on the bunks is 300 pounds. So I would say definitely probably no more than two kids up top. And uh, the bottom bunks though, you could put adults down there because they can handle a little more weight. But the size of this bunk room is just tremendous. You'll also notice this gigantic TV right across from where all your kids will be sleeping. And these days, Man, they wanna watch their YouTube videos. They wanna play their video games. Uh, even though we try to get them outside doing activities out there, they still wanna have their time with their electronics. So this is a great setup for that. Hopefully you can find some kind of balance with your kids as well. Uh, also, you'll notice in here, there is tons and tons of storage. You've got wardrobe cabinets on each side. Then you've got a full bank of drawers below each wardrobe cabinet. In addition to that, you've got pull-out drawers and more cabinet space underneath of the TV location as well. So your kids can put away all their clothes in here, uh, be self-contained back here. I also want to mention each bunk has its own light plus two USB ports so they can charge their phones, their tablets, their switches, whatever they have, uh, and enjoy their time on a camping trip. So here I am located in the bathroom in here, and I'm gonna jump in the shower, which is where we usually start our bathroom tour. You'll notice down below, when you first hop in the shower, you've got a step up of about 13 inches or so. Once you're in the shower, ceiling height in here is about six feet, four inches in the skylight area. So not too bad as far as ceiling height goes. The shower itself is a decent sized shower and it has a retractable shower door rather than a curtain. So that's a big plus. Outside of the shower, you've got your medicine cabinet, vanity down below with additional cabinet and drawer storage. And then one really nice feature in this bathroom is that it does have an exterior door. A lot of folks like that because the kids can just come in this door use the bathroom and run back out without tracking dirt or 
mud or sand all through the camper. So nice feature there. And then as far as the commode goes, if the steps were out, <laughs> which we didn't put them out for this video, but if they were out, I would have plenty of elbow room on my right side, not so much on my left. Let us know which one of these travel trailers with bunk houses you like the most and why in the comments down below. We love to read all of your comments and see what you like and don't like about all of these travel trailer floor plans. And if you want to check out some more travel trailers with bunk houses, just click the video down below. And Susan and I will see you in the next video.